Thank you. Thank you very much, Brad. That was lovely. Our call to worship and invocation will be led today by Darlene. So we'll find Darlene's box. We're ready to go, Darlene. Oh, you need to unmute yourself first, Darlene. Still it's very quiet. Welcome, friends, as we gather this day during the holy season of Lent. Welcome as we gather as a people of faith, as we worship, as we praise, and as we pray. May this time together strengthen our faith, draw us closer to each other, and to our Savior who joins us on the path. Let us pray. God of the journey, you invite us, the church, to accept the cost and joy of discipleship and to your servants in the service of others. Be with us in this time that we may be renewed as your people. May we respond to you in loving faithfulness. In the name of our beloved Savior, we pray, the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you very much, Darlene. And now our special music will be provided by Cynthia. So we'll find Cynthia's box. All right, Cynthia, we're ready for you. Thank you very, very much for that, Cynthia. And for those of you who are listening along to Cynthia and thinking there seems to be another voice there as well, um, that's basically a duet that Cynthia was singing with herself. Um, through the wonders of technology, she was able to sing along with a recording uh, that she did with her own voice. So we uh, so not only thank Cynthia for that so lovely, um, that, the lovely piece of music, but also for her, creativ or her creativity her creative spirit and uh, wishing to bring something a little bit new to worship. So thank you very, very much for that. So we are nearing the end of our Lenten series on connection, community, and covenant. We have explored this theme and relationship with others, with the church, with the wider church. And now we'll consider our sense of connection, community, and covenant with our own selves and with Jesus. Today's passage is from the Gospel according to John in the 12th chapter, verses 20 through 33. I'll mostly focus um, on roughly on the first half of the passage, but a couple of important points um, that you should know before I start reading. The first one is that even though Palm Sunday is next Sunday, today's story takes place after Jesus enters Jerusalem in the Gospel of John. And two, this is Jesus's final public teaching before his trial and execution. So here are these verses from John 12, 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, 
and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now this is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Here ends our reading from scripture. May God bless us with understanding. Amen. A few years ago, I attended the GLAAD Media Awards in New York City. The GLAAD Media Awards recognize and honor media for their fair, accurate, and inclusive representations of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer community and the issues that affect their lives. My primary purpose in attending the gala was to serve as a companion to a very good friend whose spouse was at that time co-chair of the GLAAD Board of Directors and in that role would be very busy and occupied for the day of the big event. The GLAAD Media Awards are a big deal. People get really dressed up, their makeup gets done, celebrities, quite a few of them are involved. For the event itself, I was sitting at a table with my friends and other people who were and still are their friends, including the pastor of a large New York City church. This woman and I ended up sitting next to each other. I had never met her before, so once she arrived, we spent a few minutes getting acquainted with each other. After going over our brief personal bios, we started looking around. Who is sitting at the tables near us? And more precisely, which celebrities could we see? There was Caitlyn Jenner and Diane Sawyer just at the table right next to us. But two tables away, there was a celebrity on a whole other level, Mariah Carey. <laughs> now my new friend um, and clergy colleague gasped when she saw Mar Mariah Carey and how close she was. And she almost fell out of her chair. To say that she was excited was an understatement. Once she had pulled herself together, she turned to her new best friend, me, and started plotting. Will you help me get a photo with her? My new friend asked, almost breathless. What do you think we should do and how? And so some plotting took place and finally we were ready. She handed her phone over to me, got up from her chair and headed over to Mariah Carey. Only she didn't get very far. It turned out that Mariah Carey had brought her own bouncer who was keeping an eye on the situation. Anyone moving in her direction was intercepted and informed that sorry, Miss Carey would not be taking any photos with any fans at the event. Alas. Have you ever found yourself in such cl close proximity to a celebrity, celebrity that you admire? Have you ever applauded and schemed to get a photo or an autograph from someone famous? Have you ever found yourself just wanting to say a little word, share a comment or observation that would get you just that little bit closer to someone famous, maybe someone really famous? That perhaps goes a little way in helping us understand the setup for today's focus passage from the Gospel according to John. In this story, Jesus is the celebrity at the center of the excitement. He's been teaching and healing, gaining a name for himself among the Jewish population and beyond. It's Passover time in Jerusalem and lots of people are in the city, including some Greeks, Gentiles, and they are itching to get close to this new big thing, to meet this person everyone is talking about. 
So they approach someone they might have thought was sort of one of Jesus's bouncers, Philip. Hey man, can you help me out? I'd like to meet Jesus. So Philip goes to Andrew and then the two of them approach Jesus. And as Jesus is wont to do, he doesn't give a yes or no, or even a maybe later. He takes the opportunity to delve deeper and to offer a more profound lesson. Want to meet me? Want to know who I am? Buckle up then. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it's for this reason that I have come to this hour. Jesus wasn't looking to assemble a fan club, then or now. Jesus wasn't in search of people who would gaze upon his amazingness and get so wowed as to become spellbound or giddy with excitement. Jesus wasn't looking for people who would plot and scheme to get his autograph or to speak a word into his ear or to tell him what an honor it was to meet him. Jesus was and is searching for those who are willing to look, really look, willing to listen, and more than that, to hear. Jesus is looking for those who are willing to take a good look, starting with themselves, and know that things must change. And still more than that, that there are things that need to die in order that we might live in the fullness of what God intends for us. Jesus isn't looking for a fan club. Jesus is looking for those who will listen and learn, those who will follow in the way, those who are willing to look deeply and honestly at their own selves willing to come to grips with their own inadequacies, the lies that they spin, the prejudices that cause us to judge others unfairly. Now, Jesus isn't looking for perfect people, but people who are willing to engage in the work, in the ministry, who are willing to spend good time in the place where we encounter the differences between the ways of the world and the ways of Jesus the Christ. Want to change the world? Want to make the world a better place? That work starts pretty close to home. It starts with taking a good look in the mirror. It is letting go of the harmful aspects of living selfishness, pride, treating others as less than worthy of love or respect, that the opportunity, the opportunity for living opens up and is laid out. For the writer of John's gospel, it is not enough just to come to Jesus or to want to see him. Instead, we must be willing to open ourselves over and over again to follow where Jesus is going. Jesus explains that we cannot avoid darkness and death. Rather, we are called to trust that God will bring about life. Life that is complicated, messy, but rich with possibility. With what life could be. If only we let go of the trappings that claim to offer the fullness of life, but always fail. I recently read a powerful novel by Colin McCann, a novel called A Pyragon. It's a novel based on two real people, two fathers, one Israeli, 
and the other a Palestinian. Both have lost daughters to violence. One daughter killed by a suicide bomber and the other when a soldier discharged his weapon and a rubber bullet struck the back of the girl's head with such force as to kill her. The title of the book, A Pyragon, is a geometry word, meaning a polygon with a countably infinite number of sides. Now, I don't know exactly what that means or what it's supposed to mean, but the meaning of the novel is clear enough. Begin talking about Israel and Palestine, and it doesn't take too long to discover a problem with a mind-boggling number of sides. In McCann's book, the two men whose daughters were killed by violent means come together as part of the parent circle, a group of parents who have lost children to the horrific violence and are trying to find a way to peace. The book reminds the reader in vivid, dramatic, and haunting detail that the path to peace for Israel and Palestine, and by extension and other aspects of our human connectedness is complex, intricate, personal, difficult, heartbreaking. It is hard work each and every day. For us, we ought to view our lives of faith, especially in this time as we approach Holy Week, that this life of faith is demanding and complex that the ways that Jesus lays out for us and the expectations that are outlined then and now are not easy and they often go against our instincts. Want to walk the path? Want to see Jesus? Want to know Jesus? Come, but no, it's not the easy and thrilling ride of the fan club. This is the harder way. It is demanding. And it begins with an honest look at our own selves, gazing upon parts of ourselves that we would prefer to avoid. Those parts that are hard and set as iron. Those parts that keep us from good and right relationship with others, with God, with our own selves. Those things that spark violence, distrust, and hatred that cast the other as the problem and can lead to disrespect. And in extreme cases, as we painfully witnessed yet again this past week, a violence that takes life wantonly and recklessly. So why should we be doing this hard, demanding, complicated thing that Jesus is trying to draw us into? Well, it's the way that will bring fullness of life good and meaningful connection and relationship, healing and wholeness where there is brokenness, light in the midst of darkness, life where there is death. This is the way. Want to see? Come. Come. It's an invitation with some pretty heavy strings but at the same time, a profound offer of help and a guiding hand like no other. Come, let us see together. Praise be to God. Amen. Now our mission moment will be brought to us by Christine. So find Christine's box. Go ahead, Christine. This morning, our scripture begins to prepare Jesus followers and us for the events to come. We are told in order to truly live, we must first die. We must follow in Jesus' path. To serve Jesus, we must follow. We become servants of God and live life as he, should, as he showed us. We become better people living in a community made up of those who are willing to engage with all the people in this world, full of differences, but all part of God's creation. 
we engage in this path of life in many ways. One of these is through our gifts to the outreach fund, where we give to provide financial assistance to organizations which help multiply our gifts in their work in the world. This month, our gifts are going to assist New Beginnings in its work with homeless youth. Let us be generous in our gifts this month. Thank you very much, Christine. This is a time when we are reminded of the significance and the meaningfulness of our offerings, our many, many offerings, the ways that we offer ourselves as followers to the world in which we live, sharing love and hope and grace and blessing with each other and with others. We ask for God's blessing to be upon all of our offerings, all the ways that we seek to share God's love with the people around us, and as well, people we will never meet, people we'll never meet who live in our own communities, and people we'll never meet on other sides of the world. We ask for God's blessings upon all of our offerings, and as well, we ask for God's blessing to be upon our financial offerings that we make to keep the ministry of Old South Church going. And we appreciate those of you who do give in a financial way um, to help keep the church, keep the church in its work of ministry in this world. You may give uh, by um, sending a check to the church office or dropping one off or sending one directly to Wendy at her home, or you can give using a credit card uh, you can do that through the main conference, United Church of Christ, uh, who handles all those transactions. There's a link on our website. And as well, if you wish to give to our outreach and the different things that we do um, to share uh, all of our blessings with others, just write outreach or mission on your check. And again, we ask for God bless it, God's blessings upon all of these offerings and ask that God will show us the way and how we give of ourselves and how we continue to be a per, uh, how we continue to be a community of faith, of blessing and hope and trust. May God bless us and all of our offerings. Amen. And now we come to our time of prayer. And as we normally do, we'll begin with a little bit of silence before I lead us together. And I hope that you'll find in this time, this brief time of silence, just a moment where you may lift up those concerns or people or issues that weigh on your own heart and as well to open yourselves to hear God's voice. Let us pray. God of all blessings, source of all life, giver of all grace. We thank you for the gift of life, for the breath that sustains life, for the food of this earth that nurtures life, for the love of family, friends, church, and you, without which there would be no life. We thank you for the mystery of creation, for the beauty that the eye can see, for the joy that the ear may hear, for the unknown that we cannot behold, filling the universe with wonder, for the expanse of space that draws us beyond the definitions of ourselves. We thank you for setting us in communities, for families who nurture our becoming, for friends who love us by choice, for companions who share our burdens and daily tasks for strangers who welcome us into their midst, for people from other lands who call us to grow in understanding, for children who lighten our moments with delight and offer us hope for the future. 
Oh God, we thank you for this day, for life, and one more day to love, for opportunities to be about your holy work of love and justice, beginning with our own selves. This day, we lift up in prayer those who hunger, those who thirst, those who cry out for justice, those who live under the threat of terror, and those without a place to lay their head. We pray for those who are ill, those in pain, those under stress, and those who are lonely. We pray for those who have been bereaved and those who are isolated and feeling afraid. We lift in prayer those who live in the midst of violence, those who have been victims of violence, those who choose violence. May each feel the blessing of your hope that they might find peace. Bless us all in the complex and demanding work of justice and sustain us, O God, as we seek to be your people this day and in the days to come. Gracious Savior, you taught your disciples that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. As we prepare our hearts to remember your death and resurrection, grant us the, the strength and wisdom to serve and follow you this day and always, letting go of our fear of letting go, that we may follow in faith and trust and hope and in love. For all of these things, we pray in the name of our beloved Savior, our friend and our guide, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now we come to the end of our time of worship this day. And as we come to the end of worship, here are these words of blessing that you may feel prepared, that you may feel ready, even if you don't fully feel ready and prepared, but that you will feel that you can go into the world this week, being the people you've been called to be. May God, may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. May you be rooted and grounded in love. May you grasp the full breadth and length and height and depth of the love of Christ. May you know that love which surpasses knowledge. May you be filled with all of the fullness of God. Now to God who is able to do immeasurably more than, we, than all we ask or imagine, according to God's power that is at work within us, to God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. Amen. <laughs>